Okay, everybody. I uh, obviously I've uh, muted the mics and I started the recording again. I mentioned that we're gonna be uh, providing a link for you guys to watch this too to go back and see anything that we talk about tonight. I do want to welcome you to tonight's class. Of course, this is Dual Tournaments 101, and um, and it, thank you guys for for joining tonight and, and taking the time out of your night to to try and learn a little bit more. My name's Shane. I am an employee here at Track Wrestling. I do recognize a couple of names. I know I've talked to a few of you and, and some of you several times. So um, again, thanks a lot for joining. Tonight's class is going to be designed to show you how to set up and run the dual meet tournament and uh, using our team team tournament format. And the tournament we're going to be running tonight is called Dual Tournaments 101. We're going to start right from scratch and we're going to use statisticians to enter rosters just like you normally would in a dual tournament. We're also going to be printing bout sheets, uh, but we do have another course that's going to focus on electric bouts, if or electronic bouts, if um, if you're interested in that. So keep an eye out for that. And I think actually those are starting in a couple of weeks, and so we'll kind of jump um, um, on that in just a couple of weeks to show you how to do electronic bouts. And so as I said before, I did um, uh, shut the mics off, and we're just going to go ahead and get started. So you'll notice I have several tabs open here, and I'll be jumping back and forth a little bit, but. I'm right here at our homepage. Uh, you guys probably already know this, but if you need to, if you haven't already signed up for a tournament and you need to do that, if you're just getting started, this register link right here uh, in the menu, and then I'd just come in here to run a tournament and I'd sign with, in, in with my billing account and order my tournament. Most of you are past that, but if not, that's uh, obviously the first step. And then what you'd need to do is um, log into your tournament. So I'll come to manage and tournaments. And again, a lot of this is going to be um, pretty uh, basic and um, kind of review for you guys, but we need to get here anyway. So I'm just going to click search. I'm going to find my tournament and I'm at the TWU tournaments and you'll see the tournaments that we have set up for these. And we are in dual tournaments 101. I'm going to select my user type of administrator and then log in. And so that will be the same for all of you guys. You'll log in with your admin login. Um, I do want to mention that um, this MyTrack uh, function, um, if you sign up and you create a MyTrack account and sign in your MyTrack account, excuse me, you can just sign right in with your, uh, if you have a profile. Um, our system will kind of link all of the events that you have and anything that you manage in terms of, you know, profiles and tournaments and things like that. So um, it's kind of a kind of a topic for another day, but just wanted to point that out for you. Um, the top menus, uh, for those of you that haven't worked in track wrestling, um, the left menu is pretty much including everything. And as you work through your tournament, through the setup, registration, bracketing, over into operating, uh, those menus are going to be more specific to that part of the tournament that you're um, working in. Um, you're logged in as an administrator, but if you need to add other administrators, you can come into setup, go to users, and administrators, and then you can add more administrators here too. You can also add statisticians and workers from here too, um, if you need to do that. The other item, um, and I always talk about this in every class, is the to-do list. And so we get a lot of questions that come up from people and most of the answers, quite honestly, that we get uh, for questions from people are answered right in here in the to-do list. If you work right down through your to-do list, you're gonna do just fine. Um, if you click on any of these items, it'll open a, a new window. A lot of these also have videos um, that are uh, specific, uh, kind of you know one to three minute videos that uh, focus on those topics. So make sure that this uh, yellow area that's flashing at you don't don't forget about that, um, even if you've run a, a lot of tournaments. A few other items that don't get covered in this course that are in the um, that are in the left menu, and I just want to touch on them. Um, the direct link. This is a direct link that you can um, copy and paste. You can send that out. Uh, in an email, you could put it on a flyer or something like that, and that's uh, what will get people right to your um, tournament directly. They don't have to search for it. Uh, another one here is media contacts, and this is the same in other tournaments as well, but I can add my media contacts. Um, I select the team, I put their email address in there, and uh, results will get sent to them. It doesn't have to be media, uh, but typically it's used for you know, newspapers, websites, radio stations, things like that. But you could put coaches or yourself or whoever you wanted in there. Uh, print documents. Uh, if if you noticed, in it's the same in dual tournaments as other tournaments, but most of these menus have a print um, function in there, and these print functions are just specific to that part of the part of the tournament. But the print documents area, this is pretty much everything that you would um, need to print. So if you can't find something, go ahead and find it there. 
Again, that's in the left menu here under print documents. Statistics, uh, there are statistics uh, available also in dual tournaments, just like in other formats. Um, but if I go to statistics and click on either individual or team, I can use this list and find out maybe who has the most team points or maybe the you know most pins in the least amount of time. Sometimes you give awards for those sorts of things at your events, you can use that. Um, there's nothing here right now, obviously, because we don't have any matches. And then finally in this um, area, tie breaking. And tie breaking comes in pretty um, often in um, dual tournaments, obviously. Um, so there's two tie breaking areas. One is for round robins and one's for dual meets. I'll start with dual meets. That one's pretty self-explanatory. But this is going to break a tie, uh, um, a tie score in a, in a duel and determine a winner. This is based on the NFHS's um, tie breaking. But if you wanted to adjust this, you could just by clicking on or off. You can also move those up and down if you had something that you wanted to adjust. Uh, most of you won't need to do that, but certainly you can. And then the round robins, that would, of course, be in the case if you're running a round robin tournament of three or four or five teams. Two teams finish with the same uh, record, and then this would break those ties. So um, again, a couple, couple quick items there in the left menu that we don't really get to um, in the rest of the course. So another thing that uh, I talk about in all the courses is that planning is obviously very important. So once you order your tournament, you want to make sure you're planned out with how many computers you have. And of course, that's going to depend on the size of your event. Typically for a dual tournament, one computer can really do it, especially if you're running bout sheets. And then you want to make sure your internet connection is stable, uh, whether it's hardline or a wireless signal, either way is fine. And then uh, testing out your printers and making sure that you're all set there. So um, our tournament tonight, like I said, we're going to um, go into the scenario that we're printing bout sheets. Um, even if I were running electronically, uh, there are some, still some things that we would need to print. So printers are important uh, no matter how you're running your tournament. So once you get started here, as soon as you get logged in, um, we're going to go to setup and I'm going to come into my import settings. And what I can do here is import settings from a past tournament. I can import settings from uh, maybe another tournament that I went to that uh, I liked how they ran. Maybe I want their, the, the same bracket type that they used or something like that. Um, I, can, I can go ahead and do that. Um, the, the key here is if I'm going to import, it has to be from another dual tournament. So I couldn't import, obviously, from, a, from an individual tournament. Um, and all I would do is click this Get. I would go get that tournament. I could select which items I want to import, and then I would bring those in. I'm actually going to go into more depth on that in a little while. Um, I think it's a really good idea to not import a lot of information on your, a lot of areas on your first tournament or your first couple. Um, set it up from scratch, get the hang of it, know why things are showing up where they're showing up. Sometimes people will import all the settings from a tournament somebody else ran, and then they kind of get lost and they're not even sure how they're, you know, adding weight classes or you know, selecting bracket types and things like that. So good idea to kind of learn the system. And then after you get the hang of it, importing is going to save you an awful lot of time. So very powerful area. Uh, but again, first couple times, uh, we'd prefer that you go ahead and set it up from scratch. And again, I'm going to get back to the importing in just a little bit. So that will come a little bit out of order. Next item is in the setup menu still. And if I go to settings, and the settings are going to be um, the basic setup of your tournament. And if you'll notice, compared to individual tournaments, uh, settings for dual tournaments are quite minimal, um, just not as much, not as many moving parts, so to speak. But this area here, I can go ahead and I could change the name of my tournament or the address or location, things like that. I would do that and I would save the tournament info and that would update it. If you need to change the date, of course, you have to let us know that. Um, those you can't change. This box right here for event logo URL. That's going to be, and I'm going to flip over to another um, tab right here. So if I just go out to our home page, that's going to be this logo right here. You'll notice that uh, um, by default, and this is our tournament right here, it's just our track wrestling um, basic logo. Um, you could upload your own logo just like I uploaded for these other tournaments. Um, these are um, like the Track Wrestling University logo. So if you have uh, maybe a tournament logo, maybe it's your school's logo, something like that, all you need to do is click this upload. You can browse from your computer. Uh, in my case, I have it out here on the desktop. I just select the right logo that I want, and that's the one that I want. And when I continue, this page will update, and then if I save that or reload it. I think I have to reload it. Let me try this. 
And then you see that logo ends up there. If I come back out to this landing page where our viewers are going to see it, if I go ahead and reload that page, you'll see that it uploaded there too, or it updated, I should say. So go ahead and use that. Um, that's a good um, place for you to up upload your logo. You can also upload a flyer. You can put your website in there, add some other information. Um, if you're um, running in a, like a high school season or maybe even a middle school or something like that, you would, so you would have already probably done this in the um, order process, but you could select that and tie this to a season. And we'll talk a little bit more about that too. That's how you get to the rosters. Uh, you kind of tie those to your minimum weight uh, program in some states, and that's where you would do that as well. Uh, these settings down here, I'm not going to touch on all of them, but uh, I will note that if you're if you're not seeing something in a menu, um, like for instance, if I wanted to set up prelims, I'm going to go, well, it's not here in my menu. You see there's no prelims here. If I come over to this item here in prelims and flip it to yes, and now you notice that prelims I have set to yes. And if I come back to my menu, now you'll see that it's here and I could work on the prelims from there. So if you're ever not seeing something in a menu and you're not sure why that is, it's a good chance that it's uh, on this settings page. If you flip it, you're gonna see it then. Uh, next item in our setup menu is our deadlines. Deadlines are pretty uh, self-explanatory, um, but there's really two deadlines in a dual tournament for you to set. Uh, the first one is uh, this one right here for release lineups to the public. Uh, that's obviously going to determine when rosters and other information are going to be released to the public. Uh, it's up to you to decide when you want the viewers to see that information online. So that's how you would set that. You just click calendar. You can pick a date. You could change these times. Uh, keep in mind that these are central standard times because that's where we're located. So just you have to adjust if um, if you're in another time zone. The next one, lockout statisticians, that's used to create a window of time for coaches or statisticians to enter information about their rosters. And that term statistician will come up throughout our course tonight. And it's really a, a chosen team representative, and usually it's a coach, but it doesn't have to be. And that person's responsible for entering the team's roster and the wrestler information. Uh, this eliminates a lot of the data entry that um, you would normally have to do. And then later on, actually, we're going to be adding these and showing you how that whole process works. But uh, this deadline related to statistician, uh, teams are going to be allowed to make changes to their lineups until the date and time that you set here. So you go ahead and adjust these, click save dates and time, and uh, your, your deadlines get updated. Next step would be to add our teams. So in the setup menu again, I'm going to go to teams. I'm going to click on teams here, and I'm just going to add a team. Here it could, you know, whichever the team might be, I'm gonna add Kellner and I can add there. If it's from a different state, I can use the drop downs here and click add and you'll see that now my team gets um, updated and added. I would um, possibly, and I'm gonna be doing this in a little while, I could import teams if I'm running this tournament again for a second year. And a lot of people will just import the teams and then either delete them or add them if the teams change slightly from year to year. So. Um, if I need to edit a team once they're in, I can just click on the link. I can go to edit team information. I could change any of this if I wanted to. And I could also delete that team from here as well. So that's how you make changes to teams. I'm not going to add any more if I needed to on the teams page. I would, of course, just keep clicking the add team button and add my teams as we go along. Uh, but I'm going to import those in a little bit and I'll show you how the import process works. I need to add charts. Um, all dual tournaments, track wrestling, have to have at least one chart. And most tournaments, almost all of you are going to run tournaments that only have one chart. So the only time that you need more charts is if you're running a tournament where the bracketing system is maybe too complex to be done on one chart. Maybe you have a bunch of you know different teams and pools and things like that. Um, we have a lot of bracket types that fit most of you. Uh, so most of you are going to run on one chart. Tonight we're only going to be using one chart, but we do have another a uh, course designed to show you how to use multiple charts, and that's called Dual Tournaments 102, and that'll be coming up. Um, I think that starts next week, actually, but um, uh, don't don't trust me on that one. Uh, double check the, the schedule, but I do think that's next week. So all I need to do is come into my setup menu, and um, if I actually actually if I come back to the Teams page, and I click this, oh I was there. I just click the Add Charts button. And I'm going to add a chart for this one. And I'm just going to call it um, TWU Duels. And you can name that whatever you wanted. 
Um, this is jumping ahead, and you'll see that it opens up, or uh, that link gets created. If you're running multiple charts, of course, you would name those, you know, pool A, pool B, or whatever the case might be. You, you'll you'll notice that there are lots of bracket types when I mention pools. A lot of our brackets already include pools. So again, most of you are only going to need one chart here. And then what I'm going to do is uh, select that bracket type now. So what I'm going to do is in the setup menu and go to bracket types. And again, this is going to be similar to those of you that have run individual tournaments. I'm just going to come into these are all of the bracket types that um, um, that are available here through Track Wrestling, and lots of them are scrambles. Those are the ones that I was referring to, where you have you know part pool and part you know line bracketed or whatever the case might be. For me, I'm just going to use the six team round robin tonight. Okay, and if I wanted to see what that looked like, I just click view sample, and I can view that bracket. And you see, this is just a basic six team round robin. We're gonna run five rounds, everybody wrestles everybody, and we're gonna see who the winner is at the end. So um, that's how you add your bracket type. Now we wanna add our weight classes, of course. Um, the one thing I wanna point out here too is that the order in all tournaments is pretty important. In dual tournaments, this gets pretty important too that you make sure you stay in order here and that you go ahead and get your weight classes added in, uh, in, in the correct order. So I'm just going to come into my setup menu, go to weight classes. Very simple. Click add weight class. Uh, I'm going to start with 106. Type it in, hit add, and then I would just continue to use the add weight class and work on down the line. So again, very simple. Uh, I'm only, only going to add that one. I'm actually going to import the rest here in just a little bit. Uh, the rounds page uh, on a dual tournament, most of you won't need to make changes here either, but if you go to the setup menu, and go to rounds, you'll notice that this rounds page will also look similar to individual tournaments. Um, it's basically just showing us what bouts are in each round. In a round robin, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I could uh, make changes to this, I'm not going to, but you'll see that in round one, I have bouts one through three, which makes sense, round two, four through six. One thing I'll add here is if I click on a round, I can decide and change how many bout sheets are on a page here. I know a lot of you um, are maybe going to either be running electronically when you do this, or uh, you may have a different way of uh, keeping track of that and entering them later. But that's how I would do that. I can make the changes there um, if I need to. Um, setting up team logins. And so we talked a little bit earlier about statisticians, and that's really um, what, what this step does. Uh, I'm going to come here to users in the setup menu and then statisticians. And again, we talked about this, and a statistician is gonna be a representative from each school that's gonna get their roster into the tournament. So rather than them, I don't know, calling you or sending you an email and you typing them in, they can come in and, and add those rosters um, without you having to, um, without you having to uh, um, type them in. So all I need to do from here is um, go to this operation here that says add team statisticians, and I click OK. And you'll notice that Kellner, because that's the only team that I have in here, it generated the statistician, gave them a uh, kind of a random, somewhat random username, and then a very random password. And then now what they'll be able to do is um, use that username and password to log in as a statistician. If I click on this, I could add their email, and we're going to get to the point where we are going to send those, send those statisticians an email in just a little bit. Um, but there is probably an easier way to do that for a lot of you. I can also, and we'll, we'll get to that way, I can also on my statisticians page come to the search email archive. And if I click search email archive, I could uh, type a team name in here. And um, let's just do, if I do Baraboo, because I know they have some in our system. And this is going to return all the emails that we have associated with this team. So I can go back and go, oh, yeah, this is the one I, I wanted right here. Now, it doesn't mean that they're all still you know, active or if those are the coaches or what have you for those teams. But it is a way, it's a starting point for you to maybe search if you don't have any other idea who those uh, contact people are. And then what I would do next is, again, I would have all my teams. Um, but I would come here. I would have my... Um, I would have my emails in there, and then I would come to this send notification emails point. And when I do this, I could type in my name, my phone number, and my email address. And when I click go, which I won't do in this case, 
Um, an email will get sent to each of your statisticians, for one for each team or more than one for each team. If you wanted, you could add those by using this add statistician. And they're going to get an email with uh, a direct link, how to get right into in entering the roster. They're going to see the, uh, the windows of time, their uh, deadlines, and when they need to get that in, some other information. So it's a really easy way to get information to um, all of your teams. So what I want to do right now is show you how to import. So now, um, typically, again, I would, I would have done this earlier, but I am going to show you the importing process now. So I'm going to come back into setup, of course, import settings, and I'm going to go get a tournament. So this get button, I click, and it, this is similar to a search page, even you know from our home page if you're just out looking for tournaments. And I'm going to do uh, Rapids Duels. I'm going to search that. And I'm actually going to use this one from 2011 because I know that there's data there that I want. So I'm going to click there. And then all I'm going to do, I could click all of these. I could click any of these. As a matter of fact, you could you could bring in weight classes from one tournament and then come back and maybe do you know brackets from another tournament. And that's just fine to do. And all I'm going to do in this case is do uh, weight classes, if I could find it, and then teams. And I'm also bringing the statisticians, which is going to, I'll show you how that looks in just um, just a minute here, but I come down here, I click this statement that just basically says that I'm going to import and overwrite anything that I have, in my case, in weight classes and statisticians. So it's going to overwrite that information, and I'm okay with that. And I click this import button, and then I just need to type import. And once I do that, it'll just take a minute. And now if I come back over into my weight classes, you'll see that I have the weight classes. They get imported from that tournament, and I knew that those are the right weight classes I wanted. And the same is true with uh, teams. These teams got imported. You'll notice that uh, that Kellner team is gone because, again, I overwrote that. But these are the six teams that I want to work with tonight. So those all got added. I also want to show you that because I imported these, and this is kind of handy for from year to year, if I look at my, if I go to users and statisticians, again, back to the statisticians page, you'll now notice that all the statisticians that I had from last year are in here. Their usernames are here. And then also those emails that we had for them last year that either we had or maybe you even entered those in. Um, that's, um, that, that's a pretty handy function as well. So if you, if you want to use that importing function for your teams and statisticians, you certainly can do that. Again, if you needed to delete some of these, there's a function. Um, it's not there. I'm sorry. If you need to delete some of these, you'd click on them and you could delete those guys. So I want to show you one um, item here. So I'm coming over now into an actual tournament from a few years ago. So I'm coming to this Rapids Duels tournament. Um, and I can't show you this on the testing site, but I do want to show you on the live site. I mentioned before about how um, you could select a governing body. This happens to be the Wisconsin high school season. And this column over here in blue, this is what I typed in. I typed these names and uh, as a tournament director. And then this is the season team that we're matching it to. So you'll notice Brookfield East, that's the same as Brookfield East. And all of these look good. Um, basically, this is just tying um, your tournament and the teams and wrestlers in that tournament to the dual meet system. And a lot of you in states are going to have uh, minimum weight uh, data in there, and that's just uh, that's just a nice way to to tie that together. You can get results back to those teams and and things like that. So I just want to kind of show you that if this is looking different on the teams page here than it will on yours, that's the reason why. So at this point now, I'm ready to copy over to testing. So this is really where you want to get to the point where you're going to practice. So I'm going to come back to the setup menu. I'm going to go to import settings. And then you'll notice at the bottom of this page, there's a click here to copy. Those of you that have run tournaments before, you know what this is all about. It's actually, um, this is just going to create a copy of whatever you currently have on the live site. And it's going to place it over on our testing site for you to practice. So that's where we want to go or where we want you to go to practice. We want you to, you know, mess around over there. If you're going to make mistakes, we want you to make those mistakes on the testing site. Uh, and then hopefully fewer mistakes get made on you know the actual tournament. So a good place to get comfortable and practice, uh, especially for those of you that are that are pretty new to this. And you'll notice it's going to look a lot like our live site, only it's got this testing all over in the background. But I'm just going to search for my tournament, uh, TWU. You'll see that I have a few of these over here as well. And then each time I um, each time I copy it over, it just overwrites what was there before. So if I'm in here and I mess it up so bad that I can't get anywhere, um, I can just go back to the live site. 
copy it over again, and whatever I have on the, the live site is going to come back over. So I'm going to click on that and log in just like I do on the live site. And then now I'm in. So it's going to look the same. It's just an exact copy of what I had on the on the live site. But now I'm in a place where I can feel free to, you know, take chances, mess around, make sure that you're, you know, what you're doing. So, uh, so really we're we're closing in. Let's say it's the week of the event. I just want to make sure that I'm cop kind of keeping an eye on things. Uh, one area that you can do this, and you won't be able to see this on the testing site, but when you're actually on your live site, if I go into this live tournament, this Rapids Duels that I've been, you know, kind of back and forth to. If I go into my statisticians page, if I go to setup and users and statisticians, you'll notice there's this last log login column. This tells me the last time that that coach was there. So if you are here and you're seeing that a coach hasn't logged in and you know it's a few days before your tournament, you probably want to get a hold of them and, and, and let them know. You can also look at the teams page and click on any of these teams and see the rosters that they have entered to. So just kind of monitoring, you know, how things are going. Uh, make sure um, that, you know, th that you're ready to go and that the rosters are in. The other item that I want to um, show you from here, so if I come back just on the teams page, um, I talked about this season match right here. When you send that uh, uh, notification email to teams, this is similar. I can simulate a little bit what they're going to see. Um, if I click on a team, like for instance, if I go to um, this Brookfield East team, um, they've already got wrestlers in here, but if they're tied to that um, high school season or middle school season, whatever the case might be, I can click that they can click this link. So this would be the coach. This would be real similar to what they see. They would check mark the wrestlers that they wanna bring in. They could make changes here. They could change their weights. They could update their records. They could either include media contacts or not include media contacts and then go ahead and import those. And of course, because this tournament's already done, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. And I'm actually just gonna reload and get out of there so I don't mess that up. But that is uh, what your um, coaches or your statisticians will see. Next thing that I need to do is on um, the testing site, you won't need to do this, but for the sake of our, um, for, the, for the sake of our course, I'm going to fill my weight classes. And for those of you that run predefined tournaments, uh, you'll know that you have to do this step typically in dual terms. You don't, but for me to show you what we need to tonight, I'm going to fill the weight classes. And basically, I'm just adding an unknown wrestler to every team here. So I'm kind of filling out their lineups because I don't want to type them all in, which I could do if I wanted in registration, but I don't want to, and you probably don't want to watch me do it. And then I'm going to come into operations, and I'm just going to fill the unknowns. And then it's just basically all I want, and I'll show you why I did that. If I go to, where am I going? If I go to wrestlers, now you'll see that I actually have names here. So this is going to make a lot more sense. This is just to have mock data to work with on the testing site. You won't need to do that on the live site, of course. But So we're closing in on our event now. Uh, night before, you want to make sure you've got everything set up and you know, test your printers, test your internet connection, everything. Again, I've said this before, but planning is really important, and we want to make sure that uh, you don't have any big surprises on your tournament day. Uh, for you or for us, we obviously want, want things to run smoothly for you. Um, now we're to the day of the tournament, and the coaches are coming in, and what I would probably do here is I would probably give a, a print of team detail and give it to each coach as they walk in. So I go into printing in the registration menu, so I go registration, printing, and then I'm going to select team rosters here. Um, I can select one team or all of them. I'm going to pick them all. And if I hit go, this is going to be just a basic roster. I can print it out. It's going to print one to a page. Shows the coaches what we have for their wrestlers. So that's a good thing to give to them when they come in. Um, and then also I'm probably going to come in here and print a weigh-in sheet. So in registration again, now in the registration part of the tournament, come to printing and weigh-in sheets. And the weigh-in sheet, if you worked with track wrestling, you'll know it's not just for a, as a weigh-in sheet. There's lots of information you can do here. Um, in each of these columns, you can select what you're going to see. What I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to pick column eight here, and I'm going to put an actual weight field. And I can, I'm going to sort this one by team and then by weight class. This is under the assumption that teams are going to weigh in by team. And so each team will go up and weigh in their whole team. Maybe if you're uh, weighing in by weight class, you could do this differently. And then if I view the weigh-in sheet, and actually I'll do a print preview. It's a little easier to, oh, nope. 
print preview, print preview. And then I can portrait that. And you'll see that on this first page, it's all of Brookfield East wrestlers. It's going by weight. And then there's this blank box where the, the referee might be able to write the weight in there. Um, some, some states have their own sheets and you won't need this. But if you do need something like this, the weigh-in sheet's a good, um, it's a, a good document to, to use and be comfortable with. Again, lots of flexibility and lots of editing you can do there. If you need to make roster changes after the weigh-ins, uh, it's very easy to do. In dual tournaments, I think the easiest way is in the registration menu just to go to uh, teams. And if, a, if somebody comes up and says, all right, um, Holman um, has a roster change of some sort. And there's a few different things that you can do. Um, you could add a team member. And so we'll go ahead and do that. So if I click the add team member, again, we're on this Holman team. And I'm going to type in a name. And I'm going to put Jordy Nelson in there. And we're going to select him. Let's say he's at 106. I can pick his grade. I could put a record in here if I want. Um, and I just add him. So again, I didn't put a record, but you could definitely uh, make that change. So let's say that I wanted to, let's say Jordy didn't make weight. And I click on him and I can come in here and say, all right, he's up to 113 and maybe he's 6 and 0 and we forgot to add that. So I can make any changes here from this edit participant page. You know, if there's a spelling change or something like that. And I click save. And now you'll notice Jordy is here at 113 and we have his record updated. And then in the last situation, let's say that Jordy changed his mind. He decided he is going to go play football for the Packers today instead of wrestle in my tournaments. Uh, I could just come here and delete him, and I would just delete. And then now on this roster, you'll see that Jordy is gone. So uh, pretty important to make sure the rosters are all accurate. Add who you need, uh, delete who you don't need. And then now I can go ahead and build my bracket. So I'm going to come into the Teams menu again. Actually, we're over in the bracketing area. And if I come to Teams, I'm going to click on this um, red link for my chart. Again, I only have one. So I click there. And this brings up kind of my uh, bracketing page here. First of all, I want to add Teams to the chart. So I'm going to add the Teams. Um, I could do one or two or three of them if I wanted to. I could use the Control key to highlight these. But I'm going to select them all, so I'm going to click Brookfield East and go down to the bottom. And if I use the Shift key and click the last one, they all get highlighted. Any of them in blue are going to get added to my chart. I can click Finish. And I'll type Add. And now all of these teams just got added to this chart. So they're, not, they're, they're there, they're waiting to get placed um, on the chart, but they're not quite there yet. Um, I can seed a little bit from here. Um, so let's say that, for instance, um, in my round robin, seeding may or may not be important. But let's say that I have um, two teams that I want to make sure wrestle last. It's kind of our final match. I'm going to use Wisconsin Rapids. I'll just select in the seed column. I'm going to put them at one, the one seed. And then let's say that this Luxembourg team is the two seed. I'm going to put them at two. And then from here, then, I'm going to go ahead and build my bracket. I'm going to select how deep I want to seed this, and I really only have those two teams to, to worry about. Uh, however, whoever wrestles in whatever round from you know, in the middle of the tournament, that, that I'm not concerned with. So I'm just going to seed the top two, but you could certainly do more. And then I click Build Bracket. And you'll see that my seeds kind of got placed here. If I click the View Bracket, and then View Bracket again, you'll see my bracket got built. Uh, all the matches are here, and then you'll notice that here, the Wisconsin Rapids and Luxembourg match is in the last round, round five, just like I wanted it. Uh, as a side note, maybe not even a side note, but some of you will just want to kind of hand place, and you have like maybe a set order of bouts that you want to use. You can click on any of these. So if I click the, the number two, I can come in here and select who the participants are, um, which teams are in each match. I would do that. And then that would update the bracket from there. So that's uh, that's a way you could do that. And then I could go to any of these bouts and make that change. So you can, again, you can do that from the bracket pretty easily. Oop. I need to get back to my page here. Oh, I had that open, didn't I? That's why I can't find it. <laughs> now we're back here. So that's how you build your brackets. Pretty, pretty easy to do, real easy to make changes. I can do now is I could print my bracket. 
And there's probably, there's a couple different ways to do this, but the easiest way probably is if I go to um, bracketing menu, printing, and I can print my bracket. And then I can just hit view bracket. And then from here, I would go ahead, do a print preview and print it, and I can print that out. Uh, one thing to make sure that you uh, print your brackets in landscape, otherwise they get cut off. So again, that's why it's always good to do a print preview just to make sure everything looks okay. I would also print bout sheets at this point if I was printing bout sheets for my tournament. Um, I'd go ahead into um, the operating menu now. So if I go to operating and printing and print bout sheets, um, I can decide I could maybe even, I could do a particular bout and just print the bout sheets for that. Um, I could do a round, like maybe this makes sense. I would just print the bout sheets for round one. Again, use these filters. And then I would go ahead and hit print. And now, um, remember back, I have four per sheet. You could change that if you want on the rounds page. But if I do a print preview here, here's all my bout sheets. Um, and this may or may not make sense. You know, obviously, you know that teams are um, a lot of times moving lineups around and things like that. So if that doesn't work for you, you might have another way to um, um, to go ahead and uh, you know score those and keep track of those. But you can you can definitely use the bout sheets there if you uh, if you want to. And then now I'm ready to um, enter my bout results. So the matches are going. I just need to enter my bout results and kind of keep up with my tournaments. Um, in the operating menu, there's going to be a bout entry page. And in, this brings up my first uh, dual meet, but I can select any of the duels. So let's say that you know the book comes back or my bout sheets come back for, um, let's say, this Luxembourg Brookfield East um, duel. I can come in here. If I had a different starting weight class, I could adjust that. Let's say we started at 26. And now it moves 26 to the top. All I need to do is uh, click on the weight class. I'll select a winner. Let's say this is guy one. I select the um, the win type. And let's say, who do I have? I had this guy win it. Yep. Let's say that in this case, let's say that match score I put 9 0 and I hit save. You'll notice that I get a message that comes back that says it's eight points or more, should have been a major decision. So I want to either change this to a major, or maybe I had this wrong. It was actually, I don't know, 4-0. And I click Save. And now you see that it gets updated. It also updates your team points. Um, and that's that's basically what I do. I just click on the next um, weight class, score that one as well. And so if that was you know maybe this guy, and maybe that was a fall, I can put my fall time in there, 45 seconds. And if I save that, again, I just work right on down the line. So that's how you get those in there. Um, on the bout entry page, um, so this is, you know, let, let's say I moved off here and, you know, I, I don't know, I'm over on my team's page or something. If there were errors to be made, all I need to do is come back to bout entry. I could search for the correct chart again, and because I only have them here, I could open this back up and make a change, and that would be no problem at all. And I basically just work on through my tournament now and continue to enter the bouts as they get done. One thing I'm going to do on the uh, testing site, and you can do this as well if you want to help simulate, I could go through and enter all 14 of those bouts and get that dual meet finished up. But it also is not real time efficient, so I can come on the testing site in the left menu, and I'm going to go here to operations. And there's a enter bouts function in the operations. And again, this is just on the testing site. And I'm going to use this chart because that's the only one I have. And then the maximum bout number. Um, you'll, this is really related to, and I'll show you on the, on the chart in just a minute. I'm just going to, let's say I want the first, actually, let's see the first two rounds done. So I'm going to use the first six bouts in this tournament. That should take me to, through the first, um, two rounds. And if I enter bouts, that'll take just a minute. And then now if I go to my chart, so I can get there in a lot of ways, but let's say I just go to printing and bracket and I go to view my chart you'll see that I have results for all of these. And if I click on any of these, you'll see that I have random results in there too. So it basically runs a mock tournament for you as quickly as you, you know, as quickly as you need to. Um, and so you can use that on the, uh, on the testing site. Team scoring, um, one thing you can, you can make changes here. So if I'm over in the setup menu and I go to team scoring, you can make changes. Let's say, you know, some people, have extra point, you know, maybe they have a pin worth 10 or, you know, whatever the case might be, you just click on them. You could change, you know, the number here 
of the points that get awarded for that win type, and that's just fine. Um, also, if you need to make a team point adjustment, if I come into operating and I go to bout entry, and you'll notice that you spend a lot of time on this bout entry page. Uh, once your tournament's running, that's really where you're going to be working from mostly. If I need to adjust the team points, let's say that somebody lost a team point. Uh, let's say it's here in this uh, Wisconsin Rapids versus Milton match. If it wasn't, of course, I could use the drop down, but I just adjust the team points. And let's say that Milton had a minus one for um, coaches, coach misconduct. And I add that. And you'll see that down here in this duel, it got added and it also deducted the team point. So that's how you would do that. Another thing you can do from this page is you could print um, you could print bouts. So if I click this and open this up and print it, I can print my bout sheets from there as well if I wanted to. Let's say that you know now you had the maybe you could pull all the the wrestlers in and you could print the bout sheets. Not sure if that would you know work for you or not, but definitely something you can do. And you can also print lineups and a summary from here. So if you want to print lineups, you could do this. This summary, this is a nice, uh, maybe for your media, the handout to fans, but let's say I wanted all the first round um, duels to be here. I can click this and because I have these in, you'll see that now I have those there. So it prints the summary uh, for this team there. So that's how you can print. You can print summaries of your, uh, of your matches from there. So uh, that's, that's the basics of dual meet tournaments. For those of you that have run um, individual tournaments before, you probably find that dual meets tournament, dual meet tournaments are um, quite a bit easier to run. That's not to say that you shouldn't practice and that there aren't things that, you know, that could go wrong. Uh, but if you have a good knowledge of track wrestling, dual meet tournaments uh, should be pretty, pretty easy for you. Uh, I do want to thank you all for, for joining us for our course tonight. I'm going to open up the mics for questions here in just a minute. Um, I'm going to uh, take the video of this course and I should have that up tomorrow. I'll send you the link. Um, so you have that. You'll also be able to find that on our um, TW University page as well. Uh, remember the discounting for multiple courses, $5 off for the second course, 10 for everything after that. If you have questions um, on anything here or anything that happens as you're running your tournament, um, let us know um, under contact us. You're going to find our phone number. Um, you can also submit a ticket here, and that's a great way to get a hold of us. We do monitor that pretty much all day, uh, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. And so that's a good way to um, get a hold of us. So I am going to open the mics back up right now for. So the mics are back open, uh, guys. Uh, that's that's kind of the end. Those of you that have to go or want to go can certainly sign out or you know kind of click out at any time. If you have questions, um, I'm I'm happy to stay here as long as we need. Shane, could you go back through how to uh, <clears throat> just uh, in the left menu where you filled the um, bracket with wrestlers? Sure. So, yep, over on the testing site. Yep. So, and, and this is going to be similar when you, in, in other formats or tournaments as well. Um, but there's a couple of steps you need to do. The, the one thing on the testing site you have to do is fill the weight classes. And this isn't, this won't happen on the live site, but on the testing site you need to. So the first step would be in, under wrestlers. And then you go here to fill weight classes. And I'm not going to do that only because it's already done, but that's, oh, that's the first step. You bet. Yeah, so filling the weight classes. Then you remember that that adds an unknown unknown for everybody. Yep. And basically it's kind of a slot for our system to say, to know how many wrestlers to enter here. And then once I have those unknowns, then you're right, over in the left menu, it's in operations. And operations is unique to the testing site. So that's the one that's kind of, you know, out there. So you click operations, and then it's going to be fill unknowns. And so fill unknowns basically means add random wrestlers to wherever that unknown slot is. Thank you. And that, yep, yeah, you're welcome. And that's how we ended up with all of these guys. And again, it kind of generates random um, records and things like that. So. Anybody else? I know, I mean, we kind of try and move fairly quickly through those, just, you know, obviously because there's a lot of information. But, again, if there's anything that didn't uh, click or you have questions, now's a great time. I have a question. What if 
there's a team that brings two 106 weight class wrestlers, sure. and they want one of them to wrestle a couple of the duels, and then they want the other 106 to wrestle. Yeah, that's, sure. Yeah. yeah. No, that's that's no problem at all. So. The example that we used here, I just added one wrestler per um, weight class. But all we need to do is, if I go, where's the best place to show you? So let's just say, let's go back to bout entry. And let's skip ahead now. We have results for the first six duels here, our first two rounds. But let's move to the next round. Let's say this is round three. And if I go to this bout seven, which is Rapids versus Pewaukee, these are... You know, obviously this hasn't been run yet. If I click on 106, this is where, and I probably missed this, and that's my fault. It's definitely an important piece to this. If I click on here, any wrestlers on their roster, I can select any of them. So if they had two 106s right here, we would see them both. Okay. So, and actually here, I'll just show you real quick. So if I go into the registration menu and go to wrestlers, I can add a wrestler to this team. And I'll just call him Test Test so we can identify him easily. And I'm going to put him on that Wisconsin Rapids team at 106. And again, I would add all this other information. But for our sake, we'll just leave it. So if I add him, okay, so now he's in. And this would have been done before. But it could happen, I suppose, in the middle of the event or something if you missed him. But now in the bout entry, I'm going to select that bout again. And then now when I open up to go start this 106 when I come here now you'll see that he's there okay so it could be I mean you could have 40 guys on that roster and that's just fine uh, you would just pick whoever wrestled in that match and add him in there so I could put him in there if I wanted to oh well, I uh, I, mi I missed that when we were going through I think I skipped right past it but yep any of these teams you'll be able to select any wrestler from that roster and as a point um, just because they're listed at 113, like here's a good example. I could actually take, I could actually take my heavyweight and wrestle them at um, 106. So if the weight class is entered wrong in the roster, not a huge deal. You can still use them. Obviously, your state and your referees would have rules governing that, but within our system, you can use anybody. And is that, each, yeah, that that makes sense. Now, does each state already have the rules in the track wrestling? Um, no. No. So our system won't see that. Um, our system will, will let you, again, so I'm using the example here. This 285 is wrestling at 106, and I could go ahead and score this match. Um, what I meant by that is, you know, each state, I mean, typically, and this is kind of not on topic for track wrestling, but typically if you weigh in at a weight class, if I weighed in at uh, 113, I could wrestle 113 or the weight class above it. But that would certainly be up to, you know, your state or your conference, whatever that case might be. Our system won't um, have any bearing on that whatsoever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anybody else? Questions along the way? I'm certainly happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Again, I'm I'm sure it's probably one of those where as soon as we sign out here, you're gonna you're gonna go, oh, I wish I would have asked that, and that's just fine. Um, you know, I'll stick around here for just a minute. But you know, if you do have questions, feel free to call us again. If you're uh, if you have a tournament um, out there ordered already and you don't know our number, um, it's here. It's if you go to contact us, you'll see that it's in the phone support here, and you can get it there. You can also um, submit a ticket, and obviously for those of you that haven't used that, that's just an email that comes in, and we'll reply right back to you. Again, we're, uh, we're, we're pretty diligent about answering those as quickly as we can, um, so it's not one of those where you're going to send a ticket in and, and get an answer a day later. Typically, you'll, you'll get something back within a few minutes. Um, if we're real busy, sometimes that can be a little longer, but um, use us. We're, that's what we're here for. We want to make sure that you're comfortable if you have questions, we want to hear them and, and help you out with them. So, hey Shane, uh, I took the other course a couple of weeks ago. I think that uh, you're getting better already. It's, uh, I think the, the 
connection was much cleaner, and also your presentation was was really clear tonight. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Are you going to be around after this? I had a, three quick questions for you, but they're not related to the dual tournaments. Um, I, I'm not, actually. Um, if you called in, Garrett would be able to help you. He's on tonight. That would be just fine. Or um, if you wanted to call in tomorrow, actually, I'm on in the morning. You could certainly do that. But um, if it's something, a general question, Garrett is, you know, Garrett's there. He'd be happy to help you, too. So if you called in our main line, he'll he'll answer that. Okay, thanks, James. What, yeah, whatever works best for you. So any other questions, folks? No, thank you. All right, well, if that's the case, I am going to stop the recording, and uh, I'll give you guys a minute just to kind of sign out. Otherwise, thank you very much, and have a great night.